Hello and welcome to part 6 in a video series on programming in C. In the last part we looked at some if and else statements um, and this one we're going to look at something called the switch statement which when you've got a number of values to check is a more convenient and efficient way of doing things. We'll start, well I've started by saving ch6.c and with the completely empty program as we've done in the last few videos here simply prints a new line and nothing else that should all be fairly familiar now what I'm going to do now is declare a new variable now this isn't of type int or of type float as we've looked at this is of type car so it's a character so as in a letter A or any kind of character you've got from the keyboard basically and what we need to do is we're going to use a function that we can find if we go to the good old reference site c++.com into reference stdio and s scan well scan f as you can see in the address here but I'm sure you can find it by the ways I've shown in the previous tutorials by going via reference and C library and down somewhere in here is stdio.h and then in here you'll find a description and somewhere in here will be the scan f there it is in a description of what it does so I'm going to use the scan f file which basic uh, function which basically takes input that you put into the console and then stores it in this character variable here and the way that's done is very similar to printf so use something called a format specifier to specify what format you're reading in so we're just reading in a character so c a single character and we need to tell it where to store the value that it's reading in and in this case we also need to use something called the at sign because we're storing at an address because we want to tell it to store at the address of where this character is and we'll put c for the variable and don't worry too much about this at for the address we'll be covering that more later on when we come onto pointers okay so what this line has basically done is taken some input and stored it in that variable in fact I'll just very quickly put please type a letter in here and a space so it'll actually prompt us to do something we type in the letter and now before I move on to looking at the switch we'll simply place you typed format specifier for character and our variable that should be fairly f familiar with the printf statement one thing we will do here actually is at the start of the printf is we'll put a new line as well otherwise it'll still be on the same line as this so we'll save that we'll go over to the console and we'll compile and we'll run it says please type a letter I'll put in D and it says you typed D so we've read in the input from the console now let's look at what we could do say we had a set of commands so H D A I don't know a few letters now what we could do is do something like this if C equals, now when you're comparing a character you use the single space marks as so ah, Mac keyboard so or else if and then I'm just going to copy and paste this lot down here to make things run a little bit quicker A and I'll put one more in we'll take off the if here so we'll do print f step D will be performed So this is not really any kind of, of program, but I simply want to show with the switch statement. Now, now if we compile this program and then run the program, it'll ask us to type a letter. So if I type E here, it now says step E will be performed as expected because we're using the if and else if and else if and else if. Now, for one, it starts to look a little bit confusing when you've got a lot of them. 
And secondly, there may be occasions where we want to do the same thing or we want to do something when D is pressed. But when A is pressed, we also want to do some th the action for D and then for A as well, for example. And we can do these and make this all a little bit neater with a switch statement. So we'll take all of this out. Well, actually, I'll move it down because I'm going to reuse some of the code here. But what you can actually do is type switch C. And this is like a compact if-else statement. And now you use something called case statements. So you say case C equals the letter A, do something, and then break, which means leave the switch statement. I have case D, case E, put them in the same order as before, D and E. And then what you can have is something called the default action. So if C isn't equal to any of the letters here, you can do something by default and then break. So I'll just take the code that we've already got in here to make it a tiny bit quicker. OK, good. Now I'll compile this and run. And now we'll type a letter and I'll type F, which isn't any of those letters. And it says step normal is being performed because it's saying is when you use a switch statement, it then runs through each of the cases and compares our variable with each of the case statements to see if it's equal to any of these. And if it isn't, then it simply does what's specified in the default section. So if I run the code if I run the code again and this type type D, you'll see it says step D will be performed. And what the break does is causes it then to leave the switch statement. If I take this break out and comment this break out and compile the program and now run and now type D, you'll see that now it's also performed the step A. And the reason is, is because it's found that yes, this case statement is correct. It's printed this line but because it's not being told to break out of the statement, it's carrying on and doing what's at this line. And this is another source, what can be another source of bugs in your program, but it can also be really, really useful. So for instance, when we come to doing the chess program, if we've got, if we're, I don't know, we're looking by piece, so we're generating moves for sliding pieces, so bishops, queens, and rooks, and we've got a function which generates moves for sliding pieces, we could have case bishop, case queen, case rook, all in one row with no particular code and they would all then call the same function say here I hope that's clear in fact I'll show that now so if I leave this like this take out the break statements and do this so I can now let's say step D A E will be performed and save and compile this program Now if I type A, it'll say step DAE will be performed. The same if I type D or the same if I typed E. So that's where the switch statement can be really, really useful. But you have to remember to put the break in, usually, after each of your case statements. And very useful also in a switch statement is to do something, which is like the old else, when one of our spe uh, specific case statements hasn't been seen. And you can also use this, for example, for debugging. So if Again, the chess engine is an example. If you're promoting a piece, promoting a pawn to a queen, rook, bishop, or knight, and you're making the move here, so you want to change the pawn for one of those pieces, you would have case queen, case bishop, case rook, case knight, and you could put in the default error because it must be promoting to one of those pieces, and if it isn't, then you know that if it has arrived at the default, then there's a problem, for example. So the switch statement is very compact, very easy to read, and very flexible, and a lot better than a load of if and else statements. So in this lesson, we've covered very quickly the first time getting a little bit of user input, and we've covered the switch statement and how that replaces the, or can replace, the if-else uh, nesting of, of brackets to make things a bit more readable and also slightly more flexible, especially with a default statement. In the next video, we're going to start looking at loops, so for loops, while loops, and do while loops. 
But that's it for this video. Thanks very much for listening and paying attention. I hope it made a little bit of sense. And comments, questions, criticisms are welcome on YouTube. Thanks.